Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day. We're gathered here in your holy name, gathered in this place to hear your word, for your spirit to work again in our hearts and lives through that word. So Lord, we pray that that spirit move among us mightily, that we be those hearers and doers of your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Actions speak louder than words. True statement? True statement? Yes. Pretty much, isn't it? Pretty much a true statement. You know, we, we see how that plays out in many different applications in our world. How many times do you hear a politician say, you're going to make all kinds of promises, all kinds of promises. It doesn't mean anything unless it comes about, right? You hear athletes, you know, talking about themselves, being full of themselves, lots of big talk, but it means nothing unless it happens on the court or in the, on the field or wherever that may be. I'm a kid that grew up in the country, had a gravel road, county road in front of our house. Many, many times they said, we're going to bring gravel out and put it on that road. We're going to fill those potholes, put it on that road. We're going to bring some rock out and fix that road. Don't hold your breath, people. It may or may not happen. Actions speak louder than words. But what about the word spelled L-O-V-E, love? Some people toss that word around such that it really has lost its meaning in this world. Some people use it just to get what they want. But I propose to you today that that's one of those words where actions truly do speak louder than words, where love becomes a verb, not just the word spoken. That's what we're going to talk about today. Love, action, speak louder than words as we look at this epistle reading from 1 John 3, beginning at verse 16. To start this topic today, I want to go back to not the epistle of John. I want to go back to the gospel of John. The gospel of John. John 3, 16. You probably know the word, don't you? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world, but what did that mean? What did that mean? At that point, when Jesus said that, talking to us about God so loving the world, you know what it was? It was just a bunch of words. We didn't know what that meant yet. So I find it interesting that the parallel of John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16 tells us what that was all about. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us. There we go. Actions speak louder than words. Jesus in John chapter 10, in that chapter we know is the Good Shepherd chapter, we have on this Good Shepherd Sunday today, Jesus said, I lay down my life for the sheep, but he hadn't done it yet. At that point it was all talk. The action came later. I love that parallel. John 3, 16, 1 John 3, 16. God so loved the world. How did we know love? He laid down his life for us. That's the action. That action that God did is recorded for us. Jesus gave up the riches of heaven. He came to this earth to live a humble life among us. A life that had a purpose to go to the cross, to die on that cross for our sins. There's God's love in action, giving his only begotten son up on a cross for us. There's that action in place, buried, right? Crucified, died, buried. Love and action, God raised him from the dead. He's living and reigning that his love may continue to shine down upon us in this life. You see, God doesn't just talk about love. He does something about it. And we find the fullness of that in his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world and he laid down his life through his son Jesus. And the deal is God doesn't stop there in action with his love in our lives. He continues to bring that love to us. God just didn't do it with Jesus so that everybody could know that it existed. Instead, he wants that love overflowing in our lives. Thus, he gives us these things in this church body that we call word and sacrament. His action of love is alive in those things in the waters of baptism the Spirit comes and the water combined with the Word, the power in that Word of God, the action of God, working through that, calling us, bringing us into that faith. That's God action in love. 
The word and the gospel, the message of sins having been forgiven through Jesus Christ, that's love in action to us, that the Spirit may work to that word, bringing those to a point of believing in their lives. The word in combined, right? The word works. The word works. We consecrate the elements for the Lord's Supper. The forgiveness of sins comes through that. God's love in action in our lives. And as Luther would remind us, one who is well prepared is one who believes these words are true for them. Forgiveness, right? Forgiven for you. It's there every time. Sins are forgiven. God's love in action in the confession, absolution, God's love in action. As Jesus told us, we heard it just the other week in John chapter 20, whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. See, God doesn't just talk. He acts. So when we get to 1 John 3, 16 and following, it reads, by this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. You know, these are not John's made up words, are they? Jesus in the upper room, the night he was betrayed, the day before he was crucified, and we find recorded in John chapter 13, he says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. And then he adds, by this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. See, actions speak louder than words. Jesus demonstrated that that evening by washing the disciples' feet, right? Kind of the lowest, dirtiest job you could have. But Jesus puts the towel around his waist and, go, and goes and washes the disciples' feet. He, he talks about love. I'm giving you this as an example. But here's the new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, all people will know then that you are my disciples. And that's a big deal, isn't it? This is critical for the witness of Christ in this world. Not that we just talk about the love of Christ by what we say, but that we do it by loving each other. We make Christ known through that example plus that word. The power of the Holy Spirit is what causes that change in us. Thus, when we love one another, when we support one another, when we care for one another, and the people outside are seeing that, they're going, huh, wonder why they're doing that. <laughs> because we are Jesus' disciples. It is who we are. It is what we do. Action speaks louder than words. And then, and then John comes in in this epistle and he says, If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? You know, the past few weeks I've been preaching on this epistle of 1 John and I've been talking about Gnosticism and about the, the, the heresy that that was. And, but the big deal here, that again, John's talking directly to that in life, but it's just life in general. You know, the Gnostics, again, they were saying, well, this, your body is just matter. It doesn't matter what you do with your body. On the one hand, it said, you can go and sin and do whatever you want to do. On the other hand, we don't have to do good for people, but <laughs> John's correcting that, isn't he? He says, how, if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart, how does God's love abide in him? You see, what we do reflects our belief. It reflects who we are in the lives of others. Thus, he writes also, little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. You see, God's word is powerful. The witness of those actions shows God's love alive and active inside of us to the world around us. There's a saying, right? There's a saying, people don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. It's very true. They don't care how much head knowledge we have. They don't care. They don't care that we can memorize the catechism. They don't care. We can memorize the Bible. They don't care. Unless they know how much you care about them. Because in that, in that, God is working in us. We are practicing what we preaching. Our actions are speaking louder than our words. Jesus said, by this, all will know that you are my disciples. We have love for one another, and that's the sacrificial love that's talked about in the scripture. It's that agape word, that unconditional love, the love that keeps on giving. It gives to others, not expecting anything in return. Sacrificial. 
And sacrificial word is a, is a big word, isn't it? Would you give up something that maybe you wanted for yourself to someone else that didn't have the very thing? thing? I share stories with you from time to time, impact of stories that impact my life, and I, this one is a story about love. It's about love in action. It comes from the book, Dad, the Family Coach, written by Dave Simmons. It's a story he tells about he and his two children. He said, I took Helen, eight years old, and Brandon, five years old, to the Cloverleaf Mall in Hattiesburg to do a little shopping. As we drove up, we spotted a Peterbilt 18-wheeler parked with a big sign on it that said, Petting Zoo. The kids jumped up in a rush and asked, Daddy, Daddy, can we go? Oh, please, please, can we go? You probably get that picture in your mind, don't you? Sure, I said. Flipping them both a quarter before walking into Sears, they bolted away and I felt free to take my time looking for a scroll saw. See, a petting zoo consists of a portable fence erected in the mall with about six inches of sawdust and a hundred little furry baby animals of all kinds. And the kids pay their money and they, stay, they play in that enclosure with the kids, the squirmy little critters, while their moms and dads shop. A few minutes later, I turned around and saw Helen walking along behind me. I was shocked to see she preferred the hardware department to the petting zoo. Recognizing my error, I bit down and asked her what was wrong. She looked up at me with those big brown eyes and said sadly, well, Daddy, it cost 50 cents. So I gave Brandon my quarter. Then she said the most beautiful thing I ever heard. She repeated the family motto. The family motto is, in love is action. She had given Brandon her quarter, and no one loves cuddly, furry creatures more than Helen. She had watched both of us, he and his wife, do and say love is action for years around the house. She had heard and seen love is action, and now she incorporated it into her little lifestyle. It had become a part of her. What do you think I did? Well, not what you might think. As soon as I finished my errands, I took Helen to the petting zoo. We stood by the fence and watched Brandon go crazy petting and feeding the animals. Helen stood with her hands and chin resting on the fence and just watched Brandon. I had 50 cents burning a hole in my pocket. I never offered it to Helen. She never asked for it. Because she knew the whole family model. It's not love is action, it's love is sacrificial action. Love always pays a price. Love always costs something. Love is expensive. When you love, benefits accrue to another's account. Love is for you, not for me. Love gives, it doesn't grab. Helen gave her quarter to Brandon and wanted to follow through with her lesson. She knew she had to taste the sacrifice she wanted to experience that total family motto, love is sacrificial action. Actions speak louder than words. Does that mean we never speak the word of God over there? Oh, no, no, that doesn't mean that. After all, how can someone believe it? They don't hear the gospel, right? It's right there in Romans 10. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? Or how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? Or how are they to hear without someone preaching that word to them? But you see, that word of love is backed up by our actions of love. Actions speak louder than words. You know, we, we live out this Christian life. We have God's love poured out into us. And I, I think as we examine our Christian life, how do we know really if we're hitting on all cylinders in that life? <laughs> it's really pretty simple, two words, believing and loving. Believing and loving. This reading concludes with these words today from 1 John 3. And this is his commandment, 
that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have poured out your love upon us through your son, Jesus. You love the whole world and you love us. Lord, as you have poured out your love into our hearts and into our lives, let us show also that love to others. Not simply, Lord, that they may know that we are your disciples, but, Lord, that they may know you. So we pray, Lord, by your spirit, lead us, guide us in this world, that we may follow the good shepherd and be those that point others to him in what we say and in what we do. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.